But now I see the Republican base more fired up than ever before. I see suburban voters that were kind of on edge. I don't know the Trump thing. He, I like what he's doing, but I don't like what he's saying. They are all in. And the data reflects this. But I find the First Amendment, the right to speech, is very much under attack. Charlie, I'm going to let you finish. Oh. Back when we first reached out to him, he wasn't as big as he is now, but we thought he had some great ideas, he had a great way of delivering them, and the RCU's ideas align greatly with Turning Point and Charlie's ideas, so it seemed like a good fit. For any of you guys who follow me, I hate, hate, hate the Me Too movement. I'm very vocal and against it. Um, China, you are born in poverty, you're probably going to end up in poverty. America is different because of our embrace of economic freedom, private property rights, individual initiative. That Candace is a living embodiment that a couple generations ago, her grandfather in the South was working on a sharecropping farm. I mean, he would mention the KKK and how they would shoot into his home. And what's really funny is my grandfather was never a victim. So he literally, when he tells those stories, he says things like, and my daddy used to shoot back at them boys. He was always a winner, championing the things that he went through. And my daddy used to always say growing up, if you believe that you can't, you certainly won't. If you believe that you can, you most definitely will. And that's really what I go around telling people, and somehow that's considered controversial. The left right now, they're so focused on identity politics, Candace is not allowed to think what she thinks, right, Candace? They, they say, Candace, how dare you as a black woman say good things about Donald Trump or about America? You are because of who, how you look, rather than who you actually are, that determines where you're supposed to align yourself. But they touch on why that is an issue and why you need to define yourself, do your own research, and think on your own. I actually think that, although I don't agree with a lot of your views, that your views are essential to be heard, and I think that it's important for all political parties to sit down and have an intellectual conversation. Um, organizations like the Turning Point USA has created to professor watch lists that list names of instructors and educational institutions of professors who teach harmful, insane ideologies, as Bill O'Reilly has stated. In creating professor watch lists, are you not coercing professors to use approved language, topics of discussion, and essentially supporting political correctness for your side? Well, if they're so worried about what they want, what they're saying, be made public, maybe they should be worried about what they're saying. How many of you in this room have been graded differently because you're a conservative? question for you is, why does the left continue to support race-based affirmative action when it's blatantly racist and discriminatory? A study was conducted, for those of you that follow uh, Dr. Thomas Sowell, who showed that it actually is, is net negative impact on the people that benefit from it, benefit from it, using that um, term loosely. According to a Brookings uh, Institute study, uh, we rank lower than several countries, including say Norway, Sweden, Canada, as far as social mobility goes, like people born when their parents are in the bottom one-fifth of the income, they're much more likely in America than these countries to end up themselves in the bottom one-fifth of the income. So just wondering, um, since these countries are more socialized in general, how do you account for that discrepancy? The Brookings Institution, which is a center-left think tank, identified if you make three choices, what you can do to break out of that bottom 20%. Those three choices, are to get married before you have kids, graduate high school, and get a job, any job. Uh, my quick question to you, Candace, is would you ever consider running for president? I would say no to that question, but I've decided to update it and say what Trump said 20 years ago, which is that if my country needed me, um, I would step up to the plate, I would run, and I would win. The closer we get to election, the more political dialogue opens up, and it seems like a happy coincidence that he was able to give such an empowering speech to young conservatives at this point in time, and hopefully it inspires a few people who weren't planning on getting out to vote to actually go and vote. I'm sure you're all looking at my shoes. I'll tell you a fun story about these shoes. These are called Yeezys. Um, <laughs>